Welcome to the International School of Tailoring. My name is Reza and this is going to be your ninth lesson of our How to Make a Bespoke Jacket series. In the previous lesson, we covered the principles of striking out any garment on any fabric, which in our case is a jacket. In today's lesson, we're going to strike out the traditional model of our foundation bundle. I'm going to be using the exact same principles of the previous lesson to strike out the pattern on my fabric. Now, if you've got yourself a bundle, like most of you have, great, you already have a pattern. If, however, you don't have a bundle, I highly recommend you use the pattern that we have provided on our website to prevent anything unexpected that's out of your control and mine. For your reference, we have also created a PDF that outlines the exact lay of this model and both the link to our pattern and the PDF can be found in the description of this video. So this is what we're going to do. First, I'm going to talk you through the lay on a miniature scale. That should help you to understand exactly what it is that we're going to do. Once that's done, we're going to go ahead with the thing you've been patiently waiting for, which is, of course, cutting out the jacket. You ready, my friend? Let's go. We will start by positioning the selvage towards us with the fold away from us. Then we're going to take the back panel and position it so that the center back is facing the fold, like so. The exact distances and all I will explain on the large scale. After that, we're going to have the front panel next to it with the front edge facing the selvage. Then we're going to take the top sleeve and we're going to position it so that the hind arm is facing the fold with the top of the top sleeve facing the right side of the fabric. Then we're going to take the under sleeve and position it so that the hind arm again is facing the fold, but the top of the under sleeve is facing the left side of the fabric like this. And then last but not least, we're going to put our side body panel so that the side seam is facing the selvage. This lay allows you to have a large amount of room on the right hand side of the fabric, which you can use to cut out your facings, your top collar, your patch pocket, your weld pocket, and there should be a little bit extra left over in case you make a mistake and have to redo something. So now that you know this, let's go ahead and cut out the real deal. Before you lay out your fabric, I highly recommend you run the fabric through some steam to expose it to some heat and some moisture. That will help the fabric to shrink a little bit or at least release some of that tension that's occurred on the yarns during the weaving. We don't machine wash our jacket, so you don't need to soak the fabric or machine wash it before you start striking out. But a little bit of steam should be fine. So. When I say both sides, I don't mean the inside and the outside. I just mean both sides of the outside since your fabric is on a fold. Lay your fabric in front of you with the roll facing the other side of the table and then simply begin by running some steam through it. Once you've gone all the way through, you can just flip it over and do the same on the other side. Now, you will notice that as I'm steaming, as I'm continuing, what I would do is to roll this end so that my fabric doesn't hang over my table. And the way we go. I've steamed one side and now I'm going to steam the other side of the fabric like that. Let's take our patterns out and make a start. Okay, before we begin, there are a couple of things that I want to go through with you so that you understand them and incorporate them into your system. First of all, make sure that the selvage of your top layer and the selvage of your layer underneath it are matching. After that, I want you to look at the grain and make sure that the grain is running straight and perpendicular to the selvage. If you see curves, bends, or breaks, just simply move with your fingers over the fabric and straighten your grain before you lay any of your patterns on the fabric. Once you've done that, lift the top layer and have a look and see where the edge of the layer underneath it is. Sometimes they overlap. If that's the case, take a sharp piece of chalk and mark exactly 
where the edge of that underneath layer is so that you don't end up with a panel that is two inches shorter than the other. This is an easy mistake to make. So, once you've done all of that, do exactly as I say and all will be good. Make sure that the selvage is facing you, the fold away from you. Then, take your back panel. Position your back panel so that you have two and a half inches of inlay from the edge of your fabric to the edge of the hem of your back. Two and a half inches is six centimeters. After that, make sure that the bottom of your center back has a distance of four inches, which is 10 centimeters from the fold of the fabric. Once you've done these two, you're gonna look at your chest line and make sure that the chest line of your back panel is matching the weft of your fabric. If that's all good, double check again. Sometimes rotating the panel will cause this length or this distance to increase or decrease. So two and a half, that's still good. Four inches, that's still good. Chest line, good. All right, weight on top, sharpen your chalk, trace all around the pattern. Once you've outlined the pattern, it's time to mark your balance lines and the rest of the details. Begin with the chest line. Then you do the top of the side seam. Then you do the back pitch. After that comes the center vent and of course the hip line. Remove the weight and the pattern. Take your ruler and mark solid lines for the chest line, top of side seam, back pitch, center vent, and hip line. All these lines are parallel to one another. Now it's time to mark the inlay. Take your ruler and measure three quarters, which is two centimeters, above the shoulder line and mark. Also mark the same amount around the neck and the center back. An easy way to mark inlay on long lines is to simply mark the top, the bottom, take your pattern, align with those two markings and follow that line. That should give your inlay the same shape as your actual sewing run. And continue all the way down. Take your ruler, measure three eighths, that's one centimeter, at the top and the bottom of the side seam. Align your pattern at the top and the bottom and follow through. All the way down and that's it. Now it's time to mark the vent. One inch above the center vent mark, which is two and a half centimeters, like so, and a straight line going towards the fold, like that. And that's going to be your center vent area. Now, time for the shoulder inlay. Take your ruler, measure three quarters away from the shoulder point, and connect that to the edge of your inlay on the side seam, like so. That's your back done. Time to move on with the front panel. Measure two and a half inches from the bottom and three quarters from there where the selvage and the fabric separate. So here's the separation, three quarters over. That's where the edge of your lapel has to be. Now, once you've done that, you're gonna look at your chest line. You have to do some rotating perhaps. Make sure it's perfectly matching. Double check again, two and a half. It's mainly the front that's lower, so three quarters. All right, chest line still matching. Yep, weight on, chalk all around the pattern. Once you've outlined the pattern, time to mark the details. Begin with the chest line, then we have the front pitch, then we have the break line, top and bottom. First button, your center front, your hip line, the base of your patch pocket, the top of your patch pocket, and that's about it. Now, we have a few details that we have to mark which are positioned in the middle of the pattern. What's the best way to do that? You either take a soft graphite pencil or a chalk pencil and you pick through the corners, make a rotating movement, and that should mark those points. So we have the four corners of the outbreast welt, the top point of the dart, 
the middle point of the dart where the intake line is, the top corner of our patch pocket, the base of our dart, the top and the bottom of the pitch line, that's the sleeve pitch line, and of course these five points for the curve of the patch pocket. Now, time to solidify our lines. Start with the chest line, move over to the hip line, connect one of your last dots with the base of the patch pocket, base of dart all the way to the corner of where your step is, the top of your patch pocket, the front of your patch pocket, and here where you have the curves, you can simply do it freehand. Then we have the dart. Make a mark like this, perpendicular to the center line of the dart to know where the intake point is, and of course, the top point of the dart. Now, our outbreast weld. You can take a longer ruler to mark your brake line and feel free to extend the brake line a little bit higher towards the shoulder. Then we have our center front line, our first button, our sleeve pitch right here. So double check, out breast, brake line, center front, button, dart, top point, intake point, base, patch pocket, hip line. All right. Time to add some inlay. Add three quarters, that's two centimeters, to the shoulder line. Also add three quarters outwards from the shoulder. Half an inch, which is about 1.2 centimeters, out from the pitch point. Connect freehand the shoulder inlay to the front side inlay. The curve that we have here on the front side is cut net, meaning it has no inlay. If we would add inlay around this area, our arm would not be able to go in there and it's gonna distort the entire garment, so we'll leave that as it is. As for the sides, add 3 eighths, that's a centimeter, to the top and the bottom, and just like we did with the back, align your pattern and mark. You'll have a step here, and that's absolutely fine. And continue all the way downwards. Of course, mark a clear line here. Now, for the front, you need 3 quarters right at the top, 3 quarters at the bottom, align your pattern, and when you reach the curve here, simply curve in and straighten your line. Now, for the top of the lapel, we're going to add inch and a quarter. That's about 3.2 centimeters, but you can do 3 centimeters, that's fine. And connect to where the brake line is extended. That is your forepart marked and ready to be cut out. Take your shears. Make sure they're sharp, put a weight on your fabric. Now, you're about to cut your panels. You need full concentration for this procedure. Do not look away, don't listen to a podcast, don't listen to me. First, watch what I do. Don't do it along with me. First, have a look, then always double, triple check every line that you're cutting. Never look at the point of your scissors or shears. Always consider the entire line. Stop, double check, ask yourself, what line am I cutting? All right? So, outer line, that's the inlay of the lapel, right at the top. Cut and you stop at this edge and continue to the outer lines of your panel. Cutting the shoulder inlay now. Now over to the inlay edge of the front side, into the front of the sleeve run, like so. Move your fabric over and continue cutting the front side curve. Now we're moving all the way to the outer edge of our underarm seam inlay. So, not the line inside, the line outside. Continue downwards and here you're going to have a step that's absolutely fine. Make the step and cut the outer line all the way down to the bottom. Now, time to cut the front. Again, the outer line all the way from top to bottom. Always when you're cutting, look a little bit ahead, then go back. Look a little bit ahead and go back. And that's it. Congratulations, you've cut out your front panel. Now, fold this over, put it somewhere nice. Whoops, I forgot to mark my front pitch. That's better. Now, fold this over, put it somewhere nice, and these little bits and pieces that you're keeping, put them somewhere, you're gonna need them later. Time to cut the back panel. Now, you need some concentration on this because we're gonna do something that may confuse you 
around the vent area. But first, let's just simply start by cutting the outer line of our side body inlay and that of the shoulder. So, into that line, following through all the way on the outer line from top to bottom. This is going to be some of your fit up, so put this away. Shoulder inlay around the neck. And now you have to pay attention. I'm going to cut from this point both layers all the way to the first line that I marked above my vent. Not this one, not this one, not this one. This long line that goes towards the fold of the fabric. Here I will stop. After that, I will explain. Cutting both layers, that's our chest line. We're going past the chest line, okay. The line after that is where we're gonna stop. Stop. Only lift up the top layer and continue cutting this line, which is the continuation of your center back inlay, on the top layer only. So make sure you're not cutting the layer underneath it, okay? Like so, all the way down. Now move this over and cut the lower layer on both layers that you have ahead of you on this line going towards the fold. And that now can open up. Why did we do that? Let me explain. When you sew your center back and you stop at your vent mark, and you open your seams, you're going to have a center vent. And this part that has now opened up is going to be the shield of that vent so that when your vent opens, it doesn't expose your back sides. Now, let's finish this. Take your ruler, mark right from this long edge, one inch over, it's two and a half centimeters, and make a subtle curved line from here right all the way to this edge at the bottom. Not that straight, not super curved, just a subtle curve, and then cut that away. And that is your back panel cut. Fold over, put somewhere nice. And now I'm going to move the fabric over and continue with the rest of the panels. Okay, before you proceed, double check again. Is your selvage matching on all layers? If that's so, look at your grain. Is your grain still straight and perpendicular to the selvage? If not, correct it. And then double check to see if there are some overlaps right here, which I now have, mark them. Now we're ready to continue with the rest of the panel. So take your top sleeve, position your top sleeve so that you have three inches from the edge of the hem to the edge of your fabric. That's gonna be your cuff inlay. Now. Measure six inches up, that's about 15 centimeters, and make sure that from that point, that edge of your pattern to the edge of your fabric, you have three inches of distance. If that's all good, look at your chest line. Make sure that the chest line is perfectly matching the grain of the fabric. Once you've done that, double check again. Still three inches or seven and a half centimeters, yeah. Still three inches here, yeah, that's good, all right. Hands on, chalk all around the pattern. All right, once that's done, time to mark the chest line. And then the front pitch and the top pitch. Now, double check to see if you have the hind arm of the sleeve facing the fold. Don't put the sleeve upside down or flip it over. Now, hands can go away and so can the pattern. Let's solidify these lines. That's our chest line, front pitch, and that's our top pitch. The front pitch is parallel to the chest line. Okay, time to mark some inlays. Top of the hind arm seam, you're gonna need half an inch. From the bottom, you're going to measure six inches up, three inches over, which is gonna be the edge of your fabric, and three inches over from the bottom as well. Mark a straight line at the bottom, three inches, that's seven and a half centimeters. Mark a straight line. And now from here, measure half an inch, that's 1.2 centimeters. Take your pattern, align the markings, and continue marking. Like so. At the top of the sleeve, we're going to add half an inch. That's 1.2 centimeters. 
Here you have a step. Mark this freehand to get some exercise. The forearm seam is not going to have any inlay. So this line is just simply going to continue up to the edge of your inlay that you have at the top of your sleeve. As for the continuation of the forearm seam here, don't just mark a line straight down. Take your pattern, flip it over so that your pattern is mirrored like so, and then mark the forearm seam, which is now mirrored from this line. This part is going to fold up along the hemline. Therefore, it needs to be mirrored so that when it folds up, it falls on the same line of the forearm seam. All right, take your undersleeve. First of all, look at the chest line. You know, don't do it like this. Match the chest line. You need three quarters from the top point of your undersleeve. That's fine. At the bottom, you need two inches. Measure six inches up and two inches across. You need to have that distance. That's perfect. All right, we can mark our undersleeve. Just double check the grain, put your weight on, trace around the pattern. Now, what are we going to do after this? Of course, mark the chest line. Remove the pattern and the hand. Mark a solid line for the chest line, like so. Now, from the bottom of your cuff, measure six inches up, two inches over, like so. Draw a straight line, like so. So you have this square shape here. Now, three quarters over at the base here, three quarters at the top of the hind arm seam. Align the edge of your pattern and mark your inlay. Three inches at the bottom, straight line. Extend your inlay line downwards, mirror the forearm seam, mark. Now at the top here, we need three quarters. Again, two centimeters. And all around here, we need three quarters as well. Mark freehand, like so. At the top here, the square shape, you also need three quarters. And continue your forearm seam and finish that line. All right, so that's our undersleeve done. Time to do the side body panel. Now, every panel will be slightly different based on the figuration of the person you're making the jacket for. Sometimes the side body panel may be perfectly straight and perpendicular to the chest line. In some cases, it's a bit more forward or maybe a bit more backward. That is going to affect the amount of space that your side body panel takes. So first begin by matching the chest line to the grain of the fabric. We need to have at least three eighths, that's one centimeter, right here at the forearm seam and three quarters at the side seam. So I have to move this down a little bit while keeping the chest line matched to the grain of the fabric. This is where the selvage separates from the fabric. So three quarters over is gonna be somewhere here. Once you've positioned that, put your weight on, outline the pattern. Once you've outlined the pattern, mark the chest line, hip line, and then it's time for what? Marking our lines. Hip line right here and our chest line. It may be that the hip line is not perfectly matching the grain. That's fine. There are reasons for that that I will explain later, but the chest line is what you're looking for to match. Okay? Now, at the bottom of the underarm seam, mark three eighths. That's one centimeter. Take your pattern, align, and mark. Then move over to the side seam, mark three quarters at the top, three quarters at the bottom, align your pattern, mark again. If you have a triangular piece of chalk, try to use all the edges just to maintain a sharp line all the time. Then we have three quarters at the top, that's two centimeters, three quarters over into the armhole, straight line down and again the base of the armhole will not have any inlay for the same reason that we didn't have on the front side now for the bottom how many did we leave on the front and the back two and a half inches that's about 6.2 centimeters extend your inlay lines all the way down and that's your side body panel done all right again we're going to cut you have to have a lot of concentration for this. We have multiple lines now, very close to one another. Before you know it, you're cutting diagonally through the fabric. So please, please, please double, triple check every line right from the top all the way to the bottom. Never go on autopilot. This is not an autopilot thing. Tell yourself which line you're cutting. You're cutting the outer edges of each panel. Stop every time you see an intersection 
double check what the intersection is, which line you're following. Try to keep all your lines as close to the actual pattern as possible. Don't extend your lines too far out because that could give you trouble. So if, for example, I extend this line way too far out, I'm just going to continue on autopilot all the way up to there. And if these lines are extended into one another, then you're cutting into the panels and that's a big problem. So are you ready? Do you need to pee? Go and pee. Do you need to sneeze? Go and sneeze. And then after that, let's begin. So top of the side seam, like so. Now, normally I would advise you to hold your shears in this shape. So curve your hands in natural way. Don't go like this. Sometimes, however, you have to do that. So in this case, this is what I have to do. It's not ideal, but keep it to the minimum. So we're cutting the outer edge of the inlay of the side body side seam. And stop. Now, cutting the outer edges of the hem inlay. And we are now going to follow the outer line of the underarm seam inlay all the way from the bottom to the top. Here you have an intersection, so be careful. Put your finger on it if you have to. All right, where are we continuing? We're not continuing this way, we're continuing all the way up. Stop at the top, move over and cut the armhole base. Now here, careful. Don't continue all the way up. Stop at where your inlay begins. Put your finger there, stop. Now cut all the way upwards. That's it. Now you might be thinking, what the hell do I do if I accidentally do cut in one of those lines? Well, it depends which line you're cutting into. But sometimes, so for example here, if you would have continued all the way upwards, at this point it's not a big problem because you're not going to fit this, you know, on somebody, you're just going to make this jacket. But if this was cut for yourself or someone you're making it for, then you simply wouldn't have any inlay. All you can do at the point is maybe lay the pattern on again, slightly move it over into the territory of your side seam inlay so that you get a little bit more inlay on this end. But in worst case scenarios, you just have to cut a new panel. So try to minimize those things. You will of course make mistakes, but thinking it through before doing it always saves you some time. So that's our side body panel done. Time to cut our undersleeve. Begin by cutting the edge of the hem inlay. Now we're going to cut the outer edge of our undersleeve hindarm inlay. So that's this point here. Here we may have confusing lines. Keep your finger on it just to remind yourself that you need to double check this point. All right, straight over into the square. Again, don't continue all the way. Stop right at this point, like so. Move this over and continue cutting the edge of your hind arm inlay all the way up. Now, time to cut the forearm seam. We start at the bottom, go all the way up right to this point. We're going to cut the outer edge of our under sleeve run. Also, another thing to note, try to keep your shears as straight as you can. Don't cut like this or like this. The thicker the layers are, the more on an angle you're going to cut them and then one of them ends up being a bit wider than the other. Now, if that's in an inlay area, that's okay. But if it's net, so where there is no inlay, one of your panels is going to be slightly shorter. Under sleeve done. Time to cut the top sleeve. Let's begin by cutting the forearm seam right from the top here all the way to the bottom. The forearm seam has no inlay, as I already explained. Move over to the edge of the hem inlay. We're going to continue by cutting the edge of the inlay of the top sleeve run. So naturally here we're going to have a step, like so. And now we're going to continue cutting the hind arm inlay all the way to this point. Here we're going to move over to the edge of our fabric. If you have to, put a finger here or a pin or something that reminds you not to continue mindlessly all the way down. Stop. Over. Congratulations, you've cut out all your panels. We have a bunch of stuff here. So some of them are going to be useless, some of them are going to be useful. First of all, let's cut this string and make a knot in it and use it 
in a moment. But before that, let's collect all these fit ups. These small pieces you can just cut away, you know, you're not going to use this part. So throw everything that's just too small to be used out. Keep the big pieces. These are all small pieces, utterly useless. Fold all of them together. And before we wrap up, let's just have a look at what we've got left. So here we have a big piece of fabric that we're going to use to make up the rest of the components during the construction of our garment. This part is mainly going to be used to cut out the facing of the jacket. This area, which is on the fold, is going to be used for our top collar. And you're going to have some other areas to use for your patch pockets, out breast welt, and maybe if you make a mistake and you have to make a new collar or a new pocket, you're going to have some extra room to play around with with your material. That comes later. Now, fold your fabric nice and neat. Put all the rest of your fit up into it, roll it, and wrap this around it to keep it all together. Put this in a nice place. Keep all of the panels that you've cut out. And be careful that none of the chalk lines are brushed away because that's the last thing that you want. So you can just roll these up for the next stage and that's it. Well done. Congratulations on cutting out your jacket. I hope you've made it this far without any serious distress. I say distress because I know that some of you are working with different materials. Maybe you've got some fabric left from a different project or simply don't have access to all the materials that I'm using in these lessons. We understand that. To make things easier for you, we have created two bundles that you can purchase to follow these lessons along with me with a peace of mind. The first bundle is called the foundation bundle, which you'll need if you're making a traditional model. The second one is a follow-up on the first bundle, which is called the improvers bundle, which you'll need if you're looking into expanding your knowledge by making a pagoda model. Both of these bundles can be found on our website. Simply click on the link in the description of this video and treat yourself to a bundle. You're not just buying the materials, you're also buying the convenience of having everything together at once for the future that you're investing in. My name is Reza, this was today's lesson, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Take care. I'm going to be using the exact principles from the previous lesson to cut out my cat... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> <The catfish. laughs> well, no. Congratulations on cutting out your...